All right, guys, welcome. We're going to just talk about Sketchbook Pro real quick. I know a lot of you are restarting your machine. They just came out with a new version, which is going to probably be pretty similar to this, but um, if you want to get it, you can. Um, so real quick, when you open up Sketchbook Pro, okay, you might just get this blank screen like this. You just might have down here a couple tool presets. Don't worry about it. All those little windows or little windows that can be told to open up, all you have to do is come up here, go under window, and we can scroll right down here and we have everything right in front of us, okay? So if you click window and we click toolbar, okay, there's our toolbar. And our toolbar has a couple drawing selections and it has a couple little options, okay? I'll go through those options with you in just a minute. Um, when that toolbar is up, look at what happens if you come over here and click the little uh, brush and pencil icon, okay? By clicking that brush and pencil icon, it opens up a series of brushes that you have here. Some of you might only see this because what it's going to do is it's going to, sometimes it just gives you a couple of the basics and then you have these other presets that are in here. What's really cool, do you guys know what Copic markers are? Okay, they've mimicked Copic marker sets in here. So underneath Copic right here, if you click this open, look, you have a fine pen um, and then it goes all the way down here to a broad pen, okay? And since they have the Copic marker tips in here, you can actually click right here on the toolbar and you have a Copic library, which is very nice. So you can pull up that library and look, under every one of these colors, you have a whole variation of the Copic color system. So if you've used markers before, which I have, a lot of people have, some of you are growing up in a digital age and have not, okay, these actually mimic traditional marker techniques very well. Okay, traditional marker techniques usually start from working from lighter to darker. Okay, we don't work from dark to light because once a dark marker is down and you put a light on top of it, you really don't see any change. So you have to remember that if you decide to work in markers at all or tone anything, we work light to dark and we build up its opposite sort of from a, a, a painting method, which is working dark to light. Okay, all right, so that's the Copics, right? Under your brushes right here, if you click here, you have your pencil, okay? I don't like to draw with black. I prefer to draw with a blue. Um, the only thing I draw with black in is my sketchbook um, with just a, a black pen. But whenever I'm sketching on here, I just find it very comfortable to come down and use this sort of base blue that's right here. And once I just start sketching with this, it's really great. You can see, oops, give me a second. That's my... Um, let me rotate that. That's my touch monitor acting up here. That's why I would make it. There we go. Let me turn that off. Okay. So this really mimics pencil very nicely. If I press down on the pen, I get a thick bowl line. And if I sit here and I just lightly just put the pen on the surface and I come over here and I just move the pen around, you see how light it draws? Okay. It's very light. Okay. It's very easy. And the great thing about this is it's going to allow me to get in and basically sketch. Okay, very lightly, if I want to think up an idea, I've been drawing uh, mechs and spaceships all night long for the past two days. I have 20 pages to do in my sketchbook. So I'm on a mech starship mode. Okay, so um, I can just sit here and I can just easily sketch and you'll just, you'll get this feel for it immediately. It really starts to feel like a nice pencil. Okay, it's really fantastic, all right? So that'll be what I would recommend. This is one of my favorite drawing tools of all time. When I do freelance for companies, I prefer to sketch in Sketchbook Pro. I do like Photoshop, but I like the sensitivity of what's in Sketchbook, okay? Now, we have layers inside this program here, okay? Let's go through some of that. If you come over here, look. If you hold your cursor and you hold it over some of these options, it tells you what it is. Okay, so if I come over here right now, right next to this little icon, look, I have a, we talked about the Copic marker icon. We have an icon for uh, our color picker, okay, which is right there. Uh, some, sometimes you get a color wheel that has a gradient wheel. I like this particular wheel that's in here. Um, there's some little options you can add in there too. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But right here is layers. Voila, there's layers. Now, unlike Photoshop, everything in this program you have to pretty much touch it to change it. So just remember that, right? So if I want to add a new layer, I come back, I touch the layers, I press down and I drag. And as soon as I press down with my left mouse button, okay, I'm going to get this little 
indi indicator right here. And this indicator allows me, I have an A right here that allows me to rename the layer. Okay, I can move a layer down. I can move all the layers into one. I can lock a layer. Okay, I can hide a layer so you can't see it. Okay, I can duplicate that layer and move it over to another part. And then right above it, I can add a layer. So it's really pretty intuitive. You get used to this very quickly. So when I want to add layers, I just come over like this and I just add a couple layers. Okay, so now I can be sitting here and um, oops, I can start, let's say I'm sketching on this layer and let's say I'm doing a, a starship. That's my rough sketch, right? So the great thing about this program is that I can treat it just like that. I can look, I can drop the opacity down of that layer. So I have a little opacity bar right there. You see that? A little different from Photoshop. I can just raise it instantly by touching it, okay? And if I drop that opacity down, then I can come back with a layer on top. And now I can draw over my rough sketch. And I can clean up and really define my, my previous sketch that I had, okay? And I can thick and thin the line. I can put in all lot, lots of detail. I can use that as a little bit of a guide. So if this is my ship that I'm working on, see, now if I come back here and I drop down my sketch, see what I have? I have a rough. I have now a tighter rough on top of my original loose rough. Okay? So that's a huge benefit. You, know? um, you don't always have to use the same color. Okay? Hold on a second. Let me touch this layer here. I'm going to delete what's there. Um, a lot of times when uh, these are some traditional drawing techniques that a lot of artists use, a lot of artists will comp with this type of color right here. This is what I call old school color erase days, okay, color erase pencils. So some artists will sit with a, pe with a color like this, this lighter blue. You see how light it is? There's a reason for that, why it's so nice to draw with, okay? So if I come over here and if I start drawing a couple shapes, I don't know what I'm drawing. I'm just putting something in there really quick. The benefit is then when I come to another layer and then I switch to that darker blue, I can now come on top of this. And because this other color is so much darker, it's going to pick up. And I'm, I'm not actually going to see that much blue. The, loo, the, the light blue underneath is going to actually drop pretty drastically. Okay, And that's actually a really, really fun drawing feature. And it's something that you should do and practice in your sketching because it's going to save you a lot of time. See, I could actually combine both those, and you don't really see the light blue anymore. Okay, the light blue acts as an undersketch, and then the dark blue that comes on top of it really pulls it out. So, it's you know you have multiple options there that you could do. Okay, if you don't like what you have right there, you can just say select all and hit delete. Okay, actually let's try that again. I hit the wrong. Select all, delete. And if I come back to that layer, select all and delete. That's it. Okay, that's how I can clean my layer real quick. Or if I want to delete it, I can select it like this, and I can come back in here. That's my hide option. That's my rename, merge, okay, um, duplicate, and then there's delete with a red X on it. So if I go like that, boom, it's gone. I also have a Command Z option in here, just like Photoshop, okay. So if I Command Z, I just brought it back, okay. What I like about this Command Z is I can just command Z it and go all and go back quite a few steps, okay? In Photoshop, after you do the first command Z, you have to hold Alt, which sort of sucks. You're pressing three buttons to go back. I don't have to do that in the software, and that's really convenient for me, okay? All right, so that's our pretty much our core functions. Now, again, if you get this, You're like, oh my gosh, where's everything? It's broken. It's not broken. It's all there. That happens sometimes. You just get this white page. All you have to do is go up to Window, bring up the toolbar, go back up to Window, and bring up the Lagoon. The Lagoon is down here, and it has a couple options to it that just save you a little bit of time. That's sort of, here, let me show you real quick. Let's come over here. Let's say I have a pencil. Let's say I have a couple sketches here that I've done. Let's say I'm working on something, right? Um, this allows me to go back very quickly. See that? You can press it there. It's up to you. I'm a keyboard guy. I'm used to using having my left hand on the keyboard and hitting undo. But if you want to come down here, and then if you decide, now I want to go back because that other line was awesome, you can go back and do that very quickly. Okay, that's what that's for. Also, if you look, you have that little color option here. So if I click this, 
so it allows me to change colors very quickly. And you have a couple other little tools in here. Um, these are also up here on top of your main toolbar. I like the toolbar. I just put it up here, I put it out of the way, and I don't have any issues with anything that I'm doing. Okay, click that button there, there's your layer option. Okay, so let me show you a couple other little things that this program has in it that's pretty convenient, that's a lot of fun to use. Okay, you'll also notice your undo buttons are up here too. Okay, so a lot of times when I'm working, I come up to window and I just turn off the lagoon because I don't even really use it. I have everything right in front of me that I need. I have my tools or my drawing presets here. Okay. Um, one thing that's pretty cool is above your brush presets right here, you have a couple little icons right here. These icons allow you to manipulate any of your tools right here. So watch, if I click this little guy right here, I get this little, this little, uh, oops, didn't mean to do that, hold on. I get this little brush, why is it? Sorry. I get this little brush property item here. Every time I touch it, I'm getting that weird. And what this allows me to do is, see this? I can drag and drop off of it. So if I come over, once I get that moved, okay, there it goes. Now it's moving. I was stuck on marquee for some reason. So I can move it anywhere I want. So if you're drawing and you're sketching on something and you want to have this little handy dandy resizer, you can use it. I can put it right here. And so the benefit of that is when you're zoomed into a drawing, okay, so let me talk about zooming in. I always go to do it the way I do it in Photoshop and that doesn't work on here. To zoom in, you just hit your space bar and you get this little rotational circle that pops up here. And if I go under rotate, that rotates my picture just like this very easily. And then under rotate is move. It allows me to move my image, okay. And then right above it is the magnifying glass that allows me to zoom in. See that? So I could be in here and really zoom in and put detail on something and then zoom back out very quickly just by pressing the space bar. So that's the benefit, your little brush guy here, if you're zoomed in and working on something, you can still move this guy around and put it on part of your drawing that facilitates your need easier. So if I, I'm in my brush tool, I'm my pencil tool right now, and if I click right here and drag, look at my brush. It's a lot thicker. If I click here and drag back, it automatically makes it smaller and weaker and thinner, okay? See that? Changes it very quickly, all right? Okay, um, let's go over here. If I click this little brush properties, this opens up and look at what it does. It has a basics about my pencil, okay? Um, I can adjust a couple, of, uh, some of the line thickness and some of the weight control of my pencil. And then if I can also reset it, it'll go back to a standard default. Because sometimes you might come up here and you might be using one of these other tools to put like a glaze of, of we'll talk about that a little bit later today, a shadow glaze under part of your drawing to make your drawing pop out. And if you do that, what you do is you can come back in here and you can adjust that tool. So if you're on the airbrush tool right here, I can adjust the flow in my airbrush. I can make it work very lightly. Um, I can adjust the size very quick if I want it to spray really wide or thin. Okay, this is a huge attribute for me because, and then if I hit save, it's going to remember that now. But if I come back to my tool, and I like to use my tool, so I'm going to do a light airbrush glaze right here, but I can also enlarge it this way. See that? So now I'm doing a really soft glaze like that, okay, with my airbrush tool. So. If I want to reset that tool, I just select the tool, I come up and I press on that brush property option right there, I come back and I hit reset and it's going to drop it down to its standard default that comes inside the software. Okay, or you can just manually reset it and remember how you like it. Okay, what's really cool about this is it allows you to adjust the, basically the flow and the opacity and the size so you can airbrush something and then you can come back in here and then you can start putting in lots of darker shadows on an, on an object, okay? That can be really convenient for when we're doing any type of uh, surface shading on an object, okay? All right, so the main tool that I use is this real simple pencil tool. That's my favorite tool in here. Um, there are lots of other tools in here that are great, but it takes time to master them. If you go on YouTube, there are tons of great videos. And like I mentioned before, um, I think I showed this to you guys in the other class. I'm, let me give me a second here. Let me pull up some of my favorite artists. Okay, here are these guys here at 
creature box. So if you go type in creature box, and we just click some of these images right here, okay. All right, see those characters? Those characters, they work exclusively in Sketchbook Pro. So you could illustrate to that level of detail. You just have to know your tools and you have to know how to use them. It might take you a couple of, a couple of demos or a good amount of time to get to that level, but they know what they're doing. They build up. They build from dark to light. Sometimes they work light to dark. I heard they have a couple of YouTube videos out there. Okay, but this is the level of detail you can get with this program. Okay, because you can make your own brushes. You can have some like gritty. That's one thing I need to double check because I never make any brushes. I just use a couple basic tools. But there's lots of cool little options you could use because of the layer options in here. And you can get this level of really fantastic illustration capability. Okay. What's so neat about this program is that how many people in here have iPads? Only a couple? Not more people have iPads. But on iPads now, and what we call touch styluses, which is a huge new market, right? You can download the software on it and you can use it. It's a light software. It runs very efficiently versus Photoshop's a lot heavier and requires more memory. So a lot of artists are now even putting this on their tablets and they have, huh? And it's free. Yeah, and it's free too, which is cool. Uh, compare. There's a couple others that are really nice too, but this is fantastic for your tablet. Okay, so I'll see if I can't find, I'll look around later this week and see if I can't find a couple of demos from these guys on their approach. These guys are huge right now. They're really great designers. Both these guys live in North Carolina, okay, and they work for um, a gaming company. What's, what's, do you guys remember what it's called? It's a, Insomniac, right? It's the same one we have out here in Burbank. So they work for Insomniac Games, and North Carolina is a great place to live because it's a cheap cost of living, and, um, and this is what they do. And they're so huge, right? Th this last uh, CTN event that we had, they came all the way out here to Burbank, and they had a big booth that CTN is a Creative Talent Network event that takes place. It's like an animation slash entertainment event, and a lot of artists come there. They sit, they draw, they do demos, and these guys had uh, a whole little audience and they sat there, huge audience, and they're doing demos and talking. Did you see him, Lena? Uh, no, Christina and Jonathan. Were they saw him? Yeah. yeah. Really great stuff. I mean, this is so high level, but I mean, I look at this stuff and I'm like, oh, it just makes me like, you know, and that's cool. As a, as a professional, when you can look at other people's work and feel that inspiration, look at their design, and see how they work on things. That's really fantastic. Okay, all right. So let's um, here. I'll close that up. You can check out. I have some of their work already in a file. If you'd like some, um, they do sell books, but they sell out very quickly. And they also sell digital pamphlets of their stuff, which is pretty great. Okay, they're really fantastic designers. Okay, let's come back over here. Let me show you a couple other options. So when you're drawing with this pencil tool, you have if you click that little guy right there. That's basically sort of your curvy pencil option, okay? Give me a second here. I want to reset my pencil. There we go. Now you'll notice, see how fuzzy it is? Do you guys know why that is, anyone? It's because I'm zoomed into it. There we go. See that? I was so zoomed into it that it gets a little blurry and pixelated, okay? So part of that's based off your image size. See, now I have much crisper, nice lines, okay? We'll talk about image size and some of that in a minute in case some of you don't understand what's happening with that. But look, right here, um, I have different line options that are here. So if I click this, that's my free line. If I click this, okay, oops, this is straight line. See that? And I get a straight line very quickly. So it just, just allows me to draw a dotted line. And that can be very, very convenient because you can just be sitting here and having to draw a couple of really straight lines and people are going to think you're an amazing draftsman and you're like, how did you do that? Like I practice every day. <laughs> and I just draw straight lines and it's sort of cool how the computer just does it for you. Okay. Also, okay, give me a second. Let me delete that page. All right. Um, this is pretty neat. So you also have this little function here. You know, you can have boxes. This allows you to make some really cool designs very fast. Okay, very cool. Um, right here, oops. 
see that? You just sit and tap a couple times, and then we get a series of straight lines. Come through, hit return, and then there it is. Okay, that can be very convenient. And then we obviously we have the same principle here with an elliptical tool. So if we hit an ellipse any way that we want. What's really cool about doing this, this is what I love about this program for silhouettes, is that the paint bucket tool is right here. And if I grab that, it's called they call it flood fill. See, I can just fill a shape. It reads the lines that are in it very quickly. So that allows me to do little silhouettes for my designs. It's very fast, very easy. Boom, it's done. Okay? All right. Now, these are some interesting tools that we have in here. Okay, these are symmetry tools right here. So if I click this one, anything that I draw right now is going to be symmetrical to what's happening underneath it. So that's my line of symmetry right there. So if I wanted to sketch a mountain and have the reflection of some type of a house or a shack or something, see, it's all right there. So anything I'm putting in here, See that? I have the reflection right underneath. And then I could turn that tool off real quick just by clicking it. And then I could put, maybe that looks like that's ground. And I could erase part of that. Now I have the reflection of, let's say I had some rocks in here or other elements. OK. See that? And now I have my reflection in there really quickly. Okay, it's a really fantastic tool to use. Those of you that are concept inquired, check this one out. You can flip it the other way. So now you can sit, hold on a minute, I noticed my, let me check my brush. There we go, get up a little bit more, okay. So this is pretty cool because now I can come in here, it matches pure symmetry. So if I come over here and you're one of these, you're a concept individual and you want to start thinking about, you know, hey, I want to draw a girl's face or whatever it is that you concept wise, right? Anything I'm doing on one side, it is now mimicking on the other side. Okay, and that's pretty cool because you could come in here very quickly and you can start sketching out and it's just going to mimic it exactly on the other side. So that's pretty cool. It's really fast, really convenient. So imagine doing creatures with that. Imagine if you're working on something like some type of ship design and you're trying to keep symmetry in there, you can just come in there really fast. And I think I was doing this the other day in my other class. And that's sort of weird. You get like, you got to think about what you're doing on one side is completely replicating on the other side. And then again, if there's something you don't like, you hit the back button a couple times and you can take off your lines and, you know, you can adjust somebody's face instantaneously. Uh, okay. So pretty cool, right? <laughs> All right. Also next to this, you have a couple other tools here. Check this one out. It's a ruler tool. I click that little button right there. I prefer to use my handy dandy, the ruler I told you guys to get this. It's much faster, much, much faster. You can put these on. They, they won't scratch the surface. So you can move them around the Cintiq. They really work great. You just put your pen on it, right? But there is a ruler tool here, and you have to get used to using it. But you basically, it pops up like this. The square allows you to move it. And then you have to grab one of the ends here to rotate it. And that's the part that's sort of problematic is you have to get it right where you want it. And then when you get it where you want it, you just drag your pen along the edge and see it just puts an instant line. So then if I wanted to raise that up a little bit more and then rotate it though, see then I could go like this, see that? And then if I rotate it up again, bring that other end down. Problem is I find it, it doesn't, sometimes it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to get it right where you want it versus this guy, okay? And when I'm done, I hit the X. Versus this, I just can put it on the top here. I can pick a vanishing point real quick and see I can just go like this very lightly. I'm just flopping my ruler from one side to another. See how fast that is? Very convenient, very easy, simple, easy ruler. Okay. I mentioned before, don't use metal. I don't want you to scratch the antiques. These don't scratch anything. Okay. Um, so that's really fantastic. Super easy to use. Also, let's say um, I noticed in the new. That's funny. On the PC version, I have another option. I might have to upgrade on this machine, too. They have a new French curve tool, which for some reason I don't have in here on this one. Um, so this is a basic elliptical tool. So I can come up here. I can expand my lips. 
I can move it around, I can rotate it from an angle, and then it's the same principle. When I get it where I want it to go, I just come over here and I just draw on the line. I'm not even touching the line, but it's only allowing me to draw on that dotted little area right there. Okay, so that's very, very convenient. Allows me to come in very quickly. Oops, I accidentally closed it. Don't hit the X. Okay, so if I come up here, and then I can make that a little wider. See, and then boop, I go right around it, and there it is. Okay, very fast, very efficient. Okay, um, hit the X, it closes. All right, that's the crop tool, that's the magnifier. We're not gonna work with type, okay? That's a move rotate option, which also pops up, okay, when you use your space bar. So I don't really use that that much because I come down here and I just hit my space bar, and you just get used to zooming in, you get used to rotating real quick, okay, and then moving like so, okay? Just get used to it. it takes about a day to just sort of mess with it, okay, that's it, all right? Now, the marquee tool, it's okay, but it's a little different. It does this weird thing. So let me show you. Let's say I'm drawing. Here's a new spaceship design I have. It's got thrusters here. and Okay. Let's say that's my spaceship. Awesomeness. Okay. Let's say I want to take a part of that spaceship and copy and paste it. I have to select it. So I have to come over here, and if I touch that little marquee tool, what it does, though, is it... It's a little different in Photoshop. It starts, see, and it has a line that goes back to the beginning, but that's okay. That's just to wrap around and show you what's there. You see how that works? And then it just goes back. That's it. So then I now I could select something. I could copy. Actually, let's just select, let's say we only want part of this ship here. So I'm going to go over here to select that. And then I copy it and I paste it. And then look. So now look, I go to hit the move tool because it's a Photoshop. And then, uh-uh, you don't move. You move in, you move it this way, okay? But so what it did is it just copied and pasted it on the same layer. I didn't specify where I wanted it to go. So if I come back over here, touch layer two, then hit paste, now it's on a separate layer, okay? So when you first copy and paste, a lot of times, default setting puts it on the same layer. I come back over here, and now it has it selected, and now I can move, see, and I can put that where I want it. A couple of the things I don't like, and maybe they change this in the new version, is like right here, well, they, they did, and uh, I'm going to come back and update my machine. I, I, the new version has this option to flop it and move it. And so, um, and that's pretty cool. This version doesn't have that ability. I have only scale. The new version allows me to scale. and Oh, there, there it goes. They just don't have it labeled here. So I can scale in that direction, okay? And then I can scale up and down. And then that's rotate. So I can grab parts of things, rotate them around, okay? You don't really do that as much. This is just a good, you know, solid drawing program. So if you want all those other options for like image adjustments, you know, brush, there's a way in here to put other brushes in. It's a little bit more confusing than Photoshop. Um, I learned how to do it and then I just never did it. So I just left it alone and I just prefer Photoshop. Anytime I'm getting into anything that has texture, I go right into Photoshop. If you guys like, um, I want to get you up and running on this, and maybe in a week, week or two, I, if everyone in here is, is cool with Photoshop, I don't mind doing some little demos and talking about how to use Photoshop, brush presets, making your own stuff, shading elements, and doing a couple little cool demos with that. Okay? All right. So for the most part, let's just wrap this up. That's Basically, that's the program. The only two things I haven't covered are saving. Okay? So when we come over here, um, saving and image size real quick. So I just come over here, I get save as, all right? You guys should all have little thumb drives. You can save to your desktop, but then you want to make sure you put it on your thumb drive, okay? I personally recommend to you, I've seen problems with this. For some reason, these box tech PC machines sometimes don't work. When you're working off of your drive, there's problems, okay? Sometimes it doesn't save right, whatever. What I recommend to do is you grab your file, you drag it to your desktop, and then you save to your desktop, and at the end of the day, you grab your file and you drop it, and drag, drag it and drop it back into your, your little thumb drive, okay? That's a much more convenient way to work, all right? So when I go to save this right now, it usually saves as a TIFF file, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. That's just the standard way that it saves, okay? Totally nothing wrong with that. So with TIFF um, option, if I click on that, I also have JPEG. JPEG flattens it, or you can save as a, where's my PSD option? Adobe Photoshop right there, PSD. 
So I could even save as a Photoshop document, bring my image into Photoshop, okay, as well. All right, the only thing you need to be careful of is this right here, is image size. This is what almost all students seem to mess up with, is understanding what this means right here, okay? Image size, DPI size, resolution, it's actually pretty confusing, okay? And let me explain a couple things about this to you really quick and how it works, all right? So I have my iPhone in my hand right here. My iPhone has an 8, I think it's 8 megapixel camera in it, okay? That picture it takes is only 72 DPI. However, though, it's a large size. So if I grab this and look at it, it's pretty much 72 DPI, but it's a high res quality and a very large size, okay? You can have a document that is smaller size that has higher resolution. Okay, it's all about the little dots and the resolution size. When you have something that's really high res you're working on and you want to send it to a printer, you better make sure you're at 200 or 300 DPI because 300 DPI is the standard for anything that goes through professional print or publication. So if you're working on a really nice illustration and you're making your own art of book on your own work that you're going to go sell at some events and you're doing character designs in this program, you better come up here under image size and make sure that your resolution is set at at least like 200, 250 to 300. Because you might only be putting a small image in the corner of a page, but if you're working at 100 DPI and I go to print this right now, I'm going to have some problem or it might blur up a little bit. I've had students that have been using this before and someone had a default setting, setting of 72 DPI. Okay, So how, did, how does DPI work? When we send images to people, and post images on Blogger and Facebook. Blogger and Facebook have a, a little software application that actually, Facebook's is pretty good. It resizes your image very quickly for you to their standards so it'll go on there. Why? Because the majority of people on Facebook, billions of users, have no freaking clue what image size is and they don't know how to adjust it. And I'll give you an example. One of those people would be like my friend Dave. Okay, my buddy Dave just sits there with a camera and he'll take pictures with this nice digital camera, and then he's like, oh, I'm going to email it to you. And it goes, it wouldn't attach to the file. It wouldn't work. Well, that's because your camera was set at a high res setting. It was taking image pictures at 150 DPI, but with a huge size, like 11 by 17, 150 DPI. That's not going to email. In order to email that, you have to go in and you have to resize it. You have to go into image size, resize the image to 72 DPI, then you have to even drop down the width and the height settings to get that down to a lower. The overall number is what's important. So look, if I come over here and if I say 72 DPI right now, okay, that file's 3.78 megabyte. That's still a pretty good size file. That's going to be hard for me to email that to a client. Okay, so what I do is I work on a large file that might be image size 200 DPI or 300 DPI, depending on what I'm doing. And then when I'm ready to email my work to somebody, I open up the file again, I go under image size, and then I, I adjust the image size, and then I save that file, and I usually put the words low res, meaning that it's a low resolution, it's 72 DPI. What you don't want to do is save your master file at 72 DPI, because now it's gone. And, you, and I've, I've, I've had it happen to students before, when it happens, your beautiful painting or drawing you spent all this time into is out the window. There's nothing we can do to bring it back alive. We can't apply, you know, CPR little suction cups to it and bring it back up to 300 DPI. It doesn't work that way. Once you drop that DPI all the way down, it's over, okay? All right. Um, so any questions about this basics? This is just a quick intro about Sketchbook Pro, okay? And no questions? Everyone's ready to roll, ready to dive in there? Okay. Give me a second. We're going to take a 10-minute break. Let me stop the recorder real quick.